the Lord will bless our family through what we are going to learn today in Jesus' name. So now to the main special announcements. Who knows what is coming up this month of August? Special, special events coming up in this month of August. French Day and Revival. Yes, yes, yes. So please and please, this from the church you know, leadership, to invite as much as you know, people we know, our friends. Uh, if I may ask, how many of us have at least five friends that we can invite to the program? Five. I want to see by showing of hands, if you have five friends that you know if you tell them that we attend the program. No one? Oh, just daddy? Wow. Wow. So I, 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 I believe our pastor will speak to that as well. You know, so we, we need to really, you know, you know, work towards the kingdom of God by using all this avenue to invite our, our, our fellow, you know, neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, you know, to, to such a program like this. You never can tell. God can use that to touch them. And this is a program coming up, you know, Revival and Friendship, uh, a Friends and Family Day. On Saturday, we are going to have the Revival, uh, which is going to be on August 17. Our Father in the Lord, all the way from Philippines, Pastor Dada will be around. And we have a guest artist, Jody, uh, Jody uh, McBrayer. So please, we need to use this opportunity to uh, invite as many people as possible. And, uh, and I pray the Lord will bless us, bless who, uh, the food that are coming in Jesus' name. And uh, on Friday, which is the friends and family, I mean, on Sunday, August 18 at 10 a.m., will be the main day, you know, for our friends to be present in this, in this sanctuary. Uh, I pray the Lord will make that day a glorious day in Jesus' name. And also, please, let's invite our friends, you know, as the title says, Friends and Family Day. Our neighbors, you know, our co-workers, let's bring them to the presence of the Lord to be blessed, and they will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, okay, now let's go to our Bible reading. Matthew 2 and 3. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, 
Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Rama was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead, which sought the young child's life. And he arose, and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. He turned aside into the parts of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, He shall be called a Nazarene. Matthew 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, The God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Lord bless the reason of his word in Jesus' name. And now let's uh, get ready for the panel section today. We should be anchored by Sister Chidera. Welcome, everyone, to our panel on family building. 
Today, we gather to explore the timeless wisdom and guidance found in scripture, as well as share practical advice for nurturing strong, faith-filled families. Our panel of esteemed speakers will address the joys and challenges of parenting, the importance of cultivating godly and resilient marriages, and the ways we can support one another in creating homes that reflect God's love and grace. Whether you're a parent, a spouse, or a young person eager to get a head start on family building, we hope today's discussion would inspire and equip you to build a Christ-centered family foundation. Thank you for joining us, and may our time together be blessed. Good morning, church. Okay, so we're going to have three couples um, who are going to sit on our panel. Um, and as I call their names, I would just ask for them to rise and come and take their seats. And as they're rising up and taking their seats, I would love if you all could encourage them by clapping. Okay, so the first couple is Pastor Coyote and Sister Elizabeth Adeyemi. I'll rise while the elders are coming. Um, the second couple um, is Brother Christopher and Sister Nkechi Iweribo. A little bit louder, please. <laughs> and our third couple um, is Brother Abraham and Sister Amen Ademoyegi. Keep clapping, keep clapping. <laughs> Thank you guys did a great job. So thank you all so much for joining the panel. Can you please introduce yourselves? Um, just a little background about who you are and what you do. And then also a fun fact about what you like most about being a mother or father. Uh, good morning. My name is Pastor Kayo De Adeyemi. Uh, by the grace of God, I became born again in the year 1993. And thereafter, God gave me a revelation. Um, I don't know, just introduction before I go into detail. Yeah. So uh, let me just give my wife the, the opportunity to introduce what, us. What do you like most about being a father? Say that again. What do you like most about being a father? Um, seeing my children growing up and uh, giving them instruction and seeing them taking to those instructions has ever been my joy. My name is Elizabeth Adeyemi, um, a nurse. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what do you enjoy most about being a mother? Okay. What I love most is being able to lord over my children. I'm joking. <laughs> so, um, I love being the mediator in the family. Sometimes my gentle husband sitting here go abroad when he's talking to the kids. And uh, they feel as if sometimes they feel he hates me, he hates me. Then I will go back, call them, and try to explain to them he loves you. That's why he's interested in you. Eh, you know we are from Africa, we know how to shout, but that doesn't mean he did not love you. And I'm glad to say that has helped the family and their relationship with the father. Beautiful, thank you. My name is Nkechi Lucy Iwerebo. Um, what I love being a mother, 
um, I'll use the acronym mother mending. I mend things at home, even around wherever I go to. The strength to do that is there as a mother. I am outstanding, even in my home, um, as the only female there, you know, I do my own things uh, in a unique way. I'm a teacher. I teach in the morning, afternoon, night, in the car, in the bed, anywhere I teach. Um, I help. <laughs> Being a help meet by God, I help my husband, help my children, and even outside, the children outside too, I try and help too. I encourage people and I'm ready to play, to pray, to cry, to encourage. That's what I love as being a mother. Thank you. She did that on the spot, everyone. She came up with that on the spot. That's beautiful. Morning, church. I'm Brock Christopher Iwerebo. Yeah, actually, I um, started, that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Actually, I started about a banker uh, back in Nigeria before coming to the United States. Um, currently into the into food sustainability research. Um, yes, I'm a child of God. I grew up in the church back there, Baptist church in the Sunbeam. As children, I'm of the church. Um, then you, of course, through the that's why I joined the Deeper Life back on campus. So it's a wonderful time with God and uh, with my wife, married for 20 years now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a wonderful time, really. Um, as for what I enjoy um, as a parent, yeah, working with the children, bonding with them, and being able to pass instruction, and then you see a child, um, you know, coming up to show that actually he gets the instruction. You know, I, I, as a, at a point that when you, what you are saying as a parent, the instruction you are doing, then he now takes it as part of him. You're happy for him. Yeah, God bless you. Can I just call out something that's interesting is that both of the fathers said that they enjoy giving their children instruction. And the Bible says sons not to forget the instruction of their father. So some interesting similarities there. Yeah, praise the Lord, church. Yeah, my name is Abraham Ademoyege, and this is my wife, Amen, Ademoyege. Amen. <laughs> so, um, currently, I work as an uh, analyst to make it more uh, understandable and uh, know what I do. I would say I'm a compliance analyst, but there's more to that. So, my area is AML analyst, anti-money laundry analyst. So um, what I enjoy doing, I mean, what I enjoy as a father, right? Um, I like that I'm able to see my reflection in my kids. That's beautiful. <laughs> you know, every time I, you know, maybe I went out, come back home, and I see someone calling me daddy, it gives me joy. You know, so I like that a lot, and also I like that I've always been someone with a lot of responsibilities on me, but now I have my immediate individuals that I'm responsible for. So if you want to know more about that, I will, I will explain after the service. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Amen. I have a train. My name is Hallelujah. So don't be, so that's why, hallelujah, amen. So um, I'm a nurse, I work in the hospital. Uh, the good thing I like being a mother is, because they are still little, they're still small. So I like the opportunity to be able to walk and cuddle them, it's so sweet, I love it. <laughs> and, I, and I like the opportunity to be able to shape great leaders for the future. Beautiful, thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. You, you all can give them another round of applause. So as you know, the panel is focused on family building and child raising. But before we get into the dynamics of that, I just wanted to ask, we know that 
a successful family requires a successful marriage as a foundation. So before we start talking about like raising children, can you just share with us what strategies have contributed to your success as a couple? And we can start with our youngest couple and make our way up. <laughs> uh, can you repeat the question one more time, please? So we know that a successful family depends on a successful marriage. So we want to know what are some strategies that have contributed to your success as a couple? Oh, okay. You know, first and foremost, my understanding and my um, idea of a family, you know, was around my environment in Africa and Nigeria. I never knew I would come to America. So coming to America, so everything has to change, like, you know, entirely my understanding about family and also going to school here and learning about many things. So I would say what has contributed to our sources so far in our family is having one mind on every particular thing that involves our children. So for me, I'm a kind of a person that will always sit back. Okay, I have this idea. How am I going to execute it? It was very easy for me when I was very single. Very single, I say very single. Because you can just do anything or your own nobody is going to question you. But now I'm married, not just married, I have kids too. So if I have an idea for them, I have to pass it through her. So we always have to deliberate on it. And most of the time we go back and forth. But at the long run, we want the best for our kids, you know. So I would say deliberation, communication, and uh, also prayerfully making the right decision. Thank you. We have one, one couple from each, well, one person from okay. each couple. Thank you. Um, let me redefine it a little bit. That's the strategy part for us, okay? Um, for me, being a child of God, knowing Christ first, and to understand what the Bible expects from me. That's what the Bible expects of a Christian marriage. Yeah, it's part of the success uh, factors. And um, also uh, love between me and my wife and um, communication, just like for Abraham already mentioned, very key yeah, to success in marriage. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, what I can say that has brought great success to our family, one is that uh, both of us, we are children of God. We cannot do anything contrary to the will of God. We do things together. Immediately we got married, we told ourselves that we are one. We have to keep one account. Everything, whatever she's doing, I must know about it. Whatever I'm doing, she must know about it. And uh, when we talk about the family, like giving, I, have, I came from a large family. She knows that I have so many people. When they are coming to me to ask for anything, no matter how little that thing is, I have to let my wife know. There was a situation recently when one of our family tried to ask something from her and telling her do not let your husband know and that became an issue she, she asked she told me and it became an issue. so that has actually been a success in the family because that we are one in everything we do if i have experience at work something happened to me at work i will share with him that was the time i had a trouble at work right there i got a phone call my wife this is what i'm going through start praying so that has actually brought success to the family Beautiful. So just for the audience and for uh, especially our young people sitting and listening, one thing that I heard consistently was one is um, being united in Christ, um, making sure that your marriage is built on Christ because when you know what the Bible expects from you as a husband, as a wife, it makes for success. And then another thing I heard was oneness, the importance of having one mind, one heart, one purse, making decisions together, and communication. So thank you so much for those factors. Um, so now we, we understand what has made you successful as a couple. 
and we're interested in learning how you've raised your children, okay? And as a young person, I'm curious whether when you were in courtship, whether you intentionally planned how you were going to raise your children or whether those plans developed as they were born and you know, as you raised them. So were you intentional about these are the strategies that we're gonna put in place or did you kind of do things as the children came? And any one of the, any person within the couple can answer. So, um, Wait, let's, let's hear, let's hear. Um, okay. um, hi, I, I would say we were intentional because uh, we spoke about what we're gonna do, that we're, how we're gonna save for them, for them to have the best education and everything. And we spoke about, um, the most important thing was talking about to, how to raise them up in the way of the Lord, because that's the most important thing. Because I know if a child is born again, the rest is easy. You don't need to be troubling them or anything. So we spoke about that, and we spoke about saving for their future. Did you, did you make plans like, okay, we're going to, every morning we're gonna do our quiet time together, or um, if, the, if one of our children is disobedient, we're going to put them in timeout for X, Y, Z minutes. We're gonna spank our kids or we're not going to spank our kids. Were you, did you make, did you think that in that way or? Uh, no, no, because uh, you know, the kids, they have their own personality. So you don't want to base what you, this is our family now, you know? So one thing I've, I've known, I mean, I know we are doing now is that I would say I'm the one that is still the instruction why she will, you know, if I say, I would, for, for lack of a better of word, I mean, words, right? I would say emphasize it, mm. you know? When I say, let's do this, she will be the one to, okay, daddy said don't do this, right? And my kids understand now that if I say don't do this, they don't go to mommy and say, okay, you know, I will, mommy will comp compromise, you know, so they understand that. And in terms of quiet time, every time I say let's pray, either morning or night, they know what it means, even my little boy. <laughs> You know, he's ready to say amen at any time and, you know, always trying to kneel down. So, how old is your son? One year plus. Wow. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we do that a lot. And uh, when, when we, most especially at night, when I say it's time to pray, they know that, okay, it's time to pray. We're going to pray, then we're going to go to bed, then we're going to sleep. Oh. So, that's kind of like a routine for so they them. Understand that they understand that, you well. know. So even when their mom is not at home because she worked night shift, so they know okay, it's time for us to go to bed. So and that has been helping us, and I pray that that will not change you know, awesome. as it continues to grow. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, intentional. Um, I remember this is when we started off with the kids. Um, part of it is. The early uh, morning devotion, then also we taught them scriptures, uh, Bible recitations, you know, to uh, let me say to give them Christ. Um, then regarding school, we we kind of surveyed schools when they were coming up, um, went to different schools and then pick one that I know will help them. Looking at the environment matters, um, although. Here, back in Nigeria, of course, there was private schools. We had them in those private schools. So, but here in, um, in the U.S., of course, there will be some challenges. There will be some differences. But at least the upbringing, what they already know, you know what is expected of them. That is, you know, what uh, we as parents we are assured that they do even to today. Yeah. Is this something that you plan to do before, like in courtship? So, when you were in courtship, did you? Where you like, okay, these are some of the ways that we're gonna, we plan to raise our children. We want them to go to these schools. We want them to have these careers. Mm -hmm. Or did you okay. start planning in that way <laughs> after you were married and once the kids started to come? All right, in courtship, uh, I would say a broad plan. Okay. Yeah, but not as detailed not as, detailed. you okay. know, some things change as you go. Okay. Yeah, of course, at the point we married, we didn't plan that we were going to come to the US at right, that point. Right, right. Yeah, so some things change right. as it goes. Um, Probably I wanted to say, yeah, um, I talked about school, right? Yeah. Yeah, there are schools, uh, planning for their schools, and then the, uh, the, um, the spiritual aspects. 
probably have more to do. But if I if you come yeah. again, I will. Definitely. So you said you said that you made a broad plan in courtship. Yes. Because you couldn't account for the variations in life. You couldn't account Correct. for the different, you know, changes that would occur after you were married. So you made a broad plan and then adjusted once you got married and started to have kids. Is that is that correct? Yeah, as okay. it's as it goes, that's depend on the changes you're observing okay. in children. Then of course you will try and look at their skills that they develop as they are coming up. Okay. Because career, yes, that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. My, you know, career-wise, we did not uh, look at that because we want to both told the children, you know, that it must be this. Probably I was a banker, then the child must know. We didn't have that okay. plan. Okay. Yeah, because you want to study the child and see. The okay. skills they develop, you know, naturally, and then be able to, you know, hone those skills and help the child, you know, grow. And as God, we also direct. And can, can I ask, mommy? So, is that what you would recommend for young couples? Would you recommend that they make a broad plan in courtship, and then wait to see how, like, your children's personalities, wait to see what marriage will bring, or would you, if you could go back, would you change things? Would you be a little bit more intentional about? Um, your plans for your kids okay being intentional is very good because you're focused you know what you want and I think um, being intentional before marriage is a key you laying a foundation to build up then when you enter into it the reality comes to your face so you face reality so um and as it goes, you change things. If before we got married, I would say, I have, if I have a girl, I will flex her hair, I will buy dresses for her. And I entered, I don't have a girl. So things changes as we move on. But be intentional, it helps. It lays a foundation to build up as you grow. Thank you, Ma. Um, as uh, the courtship uh, concerning the children, I think if I could remember, it was 26 years ago. Um, we, I think I remember we say we do not want one or two or three kids. That's what we said during courtship. But we, How many kids do you have? <laughs> but we ended up having four, just like wow. things change. <laughs> Even though my late uh, mother-in-law said, um, Economic is so bad now, you can have only five. <laughs> but our plan was three. Okay, so um, it is an established, we know, we don't even have to talk about it, that uh, we are a Christian, we are going to be a Christian family. And being a Christian family, right there at the back of our mind is, we and the children that God is going to give for us, we are going to serve the Lord. We are going to be for signs and wonders. And that is why sometimes it's not easy. As they grow older, we drag them sometimes to the church. But you know, when they are kids, they, are, they love jumping about, following us. Um, but, you know, they are adults now. We pray that what we have taught them um, when they are kids up to this stage we come to their memory and we are believing God that they say I will save you and I will save your children so that's the only thing I can say about that thank you okay so we're moving to our next question and okay so we understand now, I think what I'm getting away from what all of you have shared is that it's helpful to have like a broad plan, but you can't really plan for the intricacies of, of child raising because marriage will bring so many changes that you may not anticipate while in courtship. So thank you so much, that's helpful. And I hope that that's helpful for the audience and for the young people listening. Um, so our next question is, okay, so we know that children are a gift from God and that usually children differ in personalities. So we're curious, um, is it possible, so how have you navigated the different, your, your, your children's different personalities? Um, is it possible to avoid favoritism? Uh, that's a question that I'm very curious about. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
uh, in that area, I have uh, four children. And um, what I know now, if I've known it before, I would have like been more happy. There are things I do to my children that today I sometimes regret it. Like what? Can you share some of yeah, those? Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm coming. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Is I, I am three of my children that we came with to the United States. So there is one thing I I never knew before that God creates people differently. There are people, if I and I supposed to know this, but when I was in school, I we, I sat together with other kids. The teacher will be teaching us, some will get it immediately, and they will come first, come second, get all the prizes, why some will be struggling. So one of my child, he was actually struggling, but like I did not want to even, I, it's like I was forcing him, challenging him, talk, to the point like talking him down. See, you are in the class with all these kids. Why are you getting this kind of grade? And his younger ones, they were getting good grade. In fact, I, I regretted the way I was bouncing on this boy. And at times, he would tell me, these, my younger ones, when they get to this class, I will discover that they may not be able to get the kind of grade they will get. I said, no, 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 don't say that. I kept telling, and these other ones, they will be getting all this honor grade, principal honor grade, and there is a place in my house where I display all that. And this other one, never got one. There was a time he, just, he called me, said, the way you display this thing, and I never knew I was offending him. It's like it's, he saw the one for his young. So I, my wife would be telling me, leave this boy. I later realized, I came back to myself. I said, no, no, no. God gave people different talent. He gave some five. He gave some, he gave some one. And so and I now said, I now have to apologize to him. And now I left him. Please take your time. Whatever, even if you don't have university degree, it's OK. All the way I was forcing, because the where I came from, the state I came from in Nigeria, is so about school, school education. So I was forcing them on all of them. And another thing is, I was telling them, you, you must be, you will be a medical doctor, you will be this. And that was that wasn't their that, that wasn't their plan. No, many of them said they want to go into computer. As one of you cannot go into computer, you must be a pharmacy. But. It doesn't work that way. The way I was forcing on these children, I'm just saying this for everybody to learn. It, it doesn't work that way. We have to leave them. And when I now realize that I was going wrong, I need to ask God to forgive me, and I left them. And they are all doing good. The one that are that are brilliant, the one finished school working, another one is about to finish, and they are all doing great. But we can't force our opinion or our way of life or anything on these children. We just have to leave them and let them, let God have their way in their lives. Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank you, sir. And I just wanted to call out something that you said that was really um, important. You said that you called your son later and apologized. And I just wanted to highlight that because sometimes our fathers and our mothers offend us and find it difficult to apologize. And um, I think that was just so beautiful. So thank you for sharing. Um, okay, that's where my work as a mediator I'm saying. So the particular son is talking about, he felt so bad. So I talked to him, he loves you, he's thinking about your future, that's why he's doing that. At the same time, I went to my husband and I tell him, you don't do this this way. You need to talk to him. You need to understand him, don't talk down him. And like he said, he apologized and I love one thing about him. He listing and he takes the correction. And the boy, there was a day. Yes, let's give him a round of applause. That deserves applause. <laughs> there was one day that boy challenged him. He said, You are a pastor. He was not a pastor then. You go to church. Why don't you pray for me? And it broke him. When you are talking of uh, favoritism, I have a son, you know him, Tosi very outspoken right from little kid 
uh, and people know him. They continue to ask about him. So one day he comes to me, and I don't, to be fair, I love my kids to excel, but I don't have somebody so special. I love them equally. So, but he felt because he was doing so good. He said, Mommy, I know I'm your favorite son. I said, No. <laughs> right there, I said, No. I know you brag about me to your co-worker. I said, no. I said, I know all of you and I know your weakness. I said, you need to improve in your behavior. Then we can talk about loving you more. Then he looked at me and that stopped it. So I don't have somebody I favor. I love them equally and I made them know that is it. Thank you. There's also something I'm learning in what you shared, which is presenting a united front to your children. So if daddy is saying something to the sons and whether they like it or not, or whether you agree with it or not, you, you, you support him, but then in private, you share what your real thoughts are. So that's something I'm taking away and something I wanted to highlight for the audience as well. Okay, so our next couple. Okay, um, as a Christian, favoritism is not good. It shouldn't even be seen in our homes. And what I found out within years, um, counseling people, I saw that children have their own definition of favoritism. And that is not the meaning in homes. Like a father can do something with an intention to correct or to show them the way, but they feel you are favoring this person. Let me take an instance. In my external home, that's my own. Okay. Um, I'm the only one going to deeper life with my parents. So, you know, when you go out, you might buy something because you went out with that person. So coming home, the other people will feel, oh, because she's, go she's going to your church, that's why. But that is not favoritism, because in that scenario, you went out with them. And when you come back, coming from the same church, you talk more about your church. So when you laugh and joke with daddy, they will say, oh, okay, but that is not it. So I'm trying to bring out here is the meaning children give to favoritism, it is not. For a father, maybe, and a mother, you can say, okay, if you have this GPA, I will give you this. Lay it out. Let them know what you want to do. So that when you do that, they won't say, okay, you're favoring this person. We, what we do is, if we want to do something for both of them, you know, we'll lay it out. Okay, if you do this, so that when you give rewards to the other person, the other one will not say you're favoring the other person. So. In a Christian home, we should not even bring out that favoritism. We should love them equally, whether they are behaving well or not. They are rightful owner and heritage of that family, so we should love them equally. Thank you. Pastor, can you, can you explain um, how you manage your children's differing personalities? How you manage your children's differing personalities? Yeah. Yeah, um, there are different personalities. Um, yeah, of course, each child is unique. One thing is to understand the uniqueness of a child, um, to look at them, also closely observe changes. Then, as a parent, I give instructions and I work with them. I'm always you know, talking with them not allowing gap, at least they are very sure of what you expect of them. Yeah, the thing is, um, every child is unique. Then the ability to follow instructions, sometimes it can be challenging for one more than the other. Yeah, but um, from where you started, like um, avoiding favoritism, even when, as a, fa as a father, um, kind of, more pleased or more comfortable with how one is uh, developing or following instructions or working with, with, with me than the other, but I make sure 
that each of them feel loved. Then one thing, even when I observe challenges in getting instruction, one thing is to make sure that um, I don't that I don't give up. That sometimes, for many times, I go to God, show me what to do. You understand? And uh, because if it's if it's uh, not difficult, of course, it's, you don't need. So if it's difficult, it means that it's not the regular way you understand how to do it before. So you need God to come in and show the way, and that works. Yeah, you know the formula varies from you no know, differs from one child to the other, and even with a, with, with a child with different experiences. Yeah, asking God what to do helps a lot. So. Um, not showing favoritism, showing them that each of them they are loved, then giving time when there are ways to solve, then also never breaking um, it, the, the relationship so that you be you want to be able to still come back. There, there are actions you take, then you turn him, you know, you break that, you, you create that gap that what you are trying to do, you don't uh, get there. So I also always leave room that we are also, you know, I'm also able to come back regularly so that a uh, child knows exactly this is it, this is it, this is the word of the Lord, this is what God expects you to do. Then the, I also know when I should keep quiet, not every time as a child, as a parent, you, 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 no, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah, you, I know when I should leave, you know, I want to be able to still come back. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you. So I'm going to ask a different question and start with um, with you. So, and this is this will be the last question for me. And I think Pastor wanted us to open it to the audience. Uh, so the last question for me is, um, how do you communicate love to your spouse and to your children? How do you ensure that you're not giving more love to your children than to your spouse, or more love to your spouse than your to your children? Is that even possible? So I'll start. With Yeah, it's possible to balance both because you knew your husband before you knew your kids. They came after. So what we do is like to show love. You tell them you love them. Tell my husband, oh, I love you. Tell my kids, I love you. But what, and what I do is I try to make time. Whenever the kids are not around, I try as much as possible to make time as my schedule because I know I work night shifts. And so according to my schedule, I try to make time for my husband as long as my kids are not around. And even when they're around, I try to still make time for him. So what we do is, as much as possible, we try to make time for each other. Maybe we watch movies together with the kids or anything, just to that time. So that's how we show love. For me, I I express myself. You know, I love my wife. You know, even when the kids are there, and I tell them, I the kids, I love you. You know, even my girl will say, Daddy, I love you too. You know, so you know that I love them, and uh, I make sure that uh, you know providing for them is heart of love from my of the heart of love, and uh, they know that. And uh, when we have agreement on things, you know, they know that we love them. That we both that's why we both agree on something. But if we if I say no to it, you know, most of all, my girl is she's so smart that if I say no. Is somehow she wants to get mom's attention, and when mom dad, daddy said this, and uh, she come back to me, okay, daddy, that thing. If I said no to it, if I said do something, she would do that thing, and she would call my attention to it, and my expression will. If I see the smile on her face, you know, oh, okay, daddy loves me, you know, and when she sees me to smile at her, you know, so showing it, you know, the affection, the love with words, you know, on both sides, my wife, my children. You know, and uh, we've been able to practice that, you know, and we we'll continue to do that. I want to put a little bit of pressure on you. Okay. Um, how have you kept romance alive since your children were born? Well, wow, that's that's uh, <laughs> that that you know we have we have two, right? So it, it's it's a <laughs> you know it's a it's a bit it's a bit uh, you know tasking you know. But what we do sometimes. 
like she said, we mostly make use of the time that you're not at home, you know? Like we watch movies together, you know? Buy her flowers and chocolate. Thank you. See, see. I don't like flowers. Yeah, right. So, or I, chocolate. You know, chocolate. You, know, you know, everybody has their own kind of love. My own is put inside for me. That's my own. Okay. You don't want flowers. Just you've been there. You watch movies together. I've been together. Make it so, easy for him. <laughs> yeah, but that's how, you know, everybody has their own. Yeah, that's my own. And another thing is, sometimes just for our time with each other, we take the children to babysit them sometimes. So, yeah, so intentionally, intentionally yeah, space yeah. So, for us, it's very easy, it's, it makes it easy for me because the baby starts on like it's like next door to, to her, so it's very easy. Give her a call, can the kid come today? <laughs> so, and and what helps me doing our courtship, you know, when she was in New Jersey, I got to understand that she just wants my presence, you know, so that really helps me too. Okay, if I buy flowers, she's not gonna ask if I appreciate it, if I buy anything. Edible, she's not gonna appreciate it. So she just want my time, my presence, you know, so. Um, can I ask mommy, thank you. Can I ask mommy, cause I saw you made a face when I asked about flowers. <laughs> so <laughs> how have you kept romance alive and how do you spread your love between your children and your husband? Okay, let's talk about flowers. Okay. <laughs> um, I love flowers and um, I try to tell my husband that, but it's a natural African man. <laughs> and sometimes he tease me, he will tell me, you know, we are deeper life. I say, you're not getting out of this. <laughs> so, but I, I actually, I, I love flowers. Like I said, I don't mind even if it's artificial, just that flower to tell me, I remember you, yeah. I love you. Pastor, we're, we're applying yeah. pressure, we're applying yes. <laughs> So he, he knows, he knows, okay. he tries, he's still trying. Okay. So I will, t I will take that. Um, then your other question. How do you balance love between your husband and children? Okay, it's easier now because my kids are grown and then everybody have the part of the house they go to. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, the one that go to the basement, this one, you know, when they are growing, they like to stay in their room. So it's give us time and opportunity, you know, to talk. I tease him, I like teasing him a lot, <laughs> hug him and sometimes tell him it's not natural to us. I love you, I love you too. <laughs> so we do that for the kids. I make myself available cook for them, let them know I'm here, you can talk to me. And um, make them feel happy. Sometimes I ask them, what do you need? Sometimes we give them my card. I say, don't spend much. You go to the store, get whatever you need to get for you and your younger brother. And that's why it's easy for my son, my 12 years old, always coming to me, can we get pizza? <laughs> can we get this? It was not easy for him, but he's now used to it. It comes easily to me when he needs something because I made them know I'm available and you I love said, you. You said earlier it was, that it's gotten easier now to balance. What, yeah. Can you talk about, about when it was harder? When that was, was when we were living in Nigeria and it was just only one bedroom and one room. So, and uh, you know, coming from Africa background, you have that thing that, um, Romantic should be any romance should be behind closed door. So it have to be when the kids are sleeping, then we express ourselves the way we know how. So it was not um, easy then, because I was having them year almost year after year. Yeah. <laughs> Within four years, it was three kids, so it makes uh, it's not easy in a one room apartment. But then by the time we move down here, that's why I said it's not easier. We have more time to one another in our privacy. Pastor, do you want to redeem yourself really quick? Do you want to say anything? <laughs> uh, in fact, I, she has said it all, but I believe you are trying to wrap up everything. And, and I, there's something I need to share also for people to know. Challenges while raising children. Wish something I believe this one will be a take home for everyone. We can't change anybody. We can't make anybody born again. 
these children started growing up, three kids, boys, and it's like, I wanted them to be living a Christian life, which is not possible. They were growing up, they got to high school, and started growing this kind of a dreadlock here, which I began to fight against. And I never knew I was actually fighting against forces that I, can, I cannot win. And because I was fighting this battle with a physical uh, hand, I wasn't doing it even spiritually. So, and they kept complaining. There was one I called him. I said, this type of year, I do not want anyone living in my house to carry this year. I said, let's just, let's have an agreement. Let me give you $200, take this thing down. He agreed. He took my $200, he took it down. After a while, the hair started growing up again. And I said, but you are now breached a contract. I, st I struggle with this, but I now discover, and something kept telling me, because when it, I, I, there was time we took their jeans, this tall, tall jeans, and they bought it like that. We took it from them. But something kept telling me within me, there is an, a, a proverb in my area. They, uh, this, that proverb said, Agbawabura, they will share Adults come out and swear if you have never been a child. So at the end of the day, I now discover I can't not change. I will go to their school. Virtually all the kids, they carry the same year do. I go to work. Adults like me carry the same thing. Even something, somebody they call pastor carrying the same thing. So how am I going to change somebody who is not born again? These children are not born again. How will I? It's like I was first, if they take it down today, tomorrow it will go, because that's what they saw. I learned from that, and I'm sharing it with people. You, you pray for your children. If they are not committing a violent crime, if it is about dressing here, yeah, keep praying for them. When they become born again, or they, be, they will take it down even by themselves. That is what I want to share. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK, so the same question. How do you balance love between your husband and your children? How do you keep romance alive? I play and I love showing what is in my heart. And at a point, when we started, <laughs> I know he loves me, but you know, I want him to say it. I want him to play. I want an atmosphere of, you know, happy Romance. jumping, yeah. dancing, and because that's how I grew up. Those that know my parents, they are jovial people. Mm. You know, the, the name they call themselves, that's the name we are calling because I emulate them. Mm. I saw how they grew, how we grew up under them. My dad will go to work, come back. Once he comes back and my mom is not back, he will hide behind the door. Once my <laughs> mom will go, he, you know, the vibe will just be there and they go anywhere together except their workplace. Mm. So when my, my husband didn't really know them very well before we got married, but I think when we got married, he saw the way they were doing, and we continued that way. It's not difficult to call me our pet name. <laughs> <laughs> so that love is there. I, and I made the children know I'm out for them. Because outside, I'm someone that likes helping people. I'm someone that likes um, when I'm ministered to, to talk to someone, I will do that. I have younger ones I talk to in many places, maybe in Facebook and every other place I went to, I try to seek out someone to talk to and I receive good results. So I, to my children, I made them know I'm out for them. I play with them sometimes because they are boys, they wouldn't want to play, but one of them can now touch me, you know? 
having that open mind anytime anywhere i am ready if i'm in my, in my bedroom knock and enter just anytime i make myself open to to them so i show them that i love them and they need to you know connect to that but one thing i want to share is before they grew to the age they are now i instruct people love them you know this thing that they will change but when he got my own oh my god i was like oh god how will i undo this you know when they start growing and start saying um i want to do it this way come back is this way i want to do it this way it hurts me a lot but one day i i saw myself talking to someone no one was there but because i've really talked to so many people i now talk to myself mm. this is your time how do you handle this so it changed my thinking and how i handle my children of course there are times that they will disobey how do i handle it if i can tell one okay your child is like this fine pray for her one day she will come back pray for him one day he will come back now is my time am i praying so but i've realized and come back to my senses that this is my time i need to pray love them just show them love like the prodigal son once they stray about with your prayer and love they will come back mm -hmm. so nice. i have that mind now to you know still love them whichever condition they are but one thing is don't stop talking to them don't stop it because once you relax they will feel oh my dad is good with this my mom is good with it no take your time talk to them i always send a text message once i send any, anything i will test the message i was i will be like one day they will get up and read the test message and it will make sense to them mm -hmm. so i have learned a lot and what i've taught to others is my own time i need to implement it and god is helping me praise the lord amen thank you okay um the body with my wife um yeah somehow <laughs> i think it gets better and better yeah <laughs> so have you have you started buying flowers for her pardon? have you started buying flowers oh okay a different thing not, not a little bit you don't like flowers yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> i yeah, like flowers but it's, a, it's matter of understanding how to look at what so sometimes there are changes that's okay. yeah yeah but at least the thing is that we are connecting and we are yeah as far you know, if I if I compare with the time we married, yeah, I knew I don't know as much as I know now, mm. and probably the bonding, you know, <laughs> yeah, we are improving. Yeah, yeah, we're improving much more than so. <laughs> <laughs> so for the uh, kids, um, for and that is one needs to understand also to give them time when they need attention. Yeah, it's a matter of being observant. Of what is happening in the family and you know being a kind of uh, if, you're, if you want a leader let's say, even in the workplace you have to be over everything and make sure that things are going in the, in the right way yeah so when they need attention i make sure that look it's time to give attention like um for one of them something happened last sunday but i just wanted to be sure that it does not turn him off because uh, he takes his brother and then my mother-in-law to church so this immediately like he came back from work because it's also challenging when he comes from work you know to want to sleep for an hour so those things are there but somehow they were late last sunday so some things but i want to be sure that it does not uh, have impact or it should, and it be an issue this morning so immediately he came back i went just talk to him you know I, yes i know we want to rest early okay take the, you know the time then good enough before we came he was even in, already in the bathroom wonderful because it starts later than we do yeah so when they need time i want to, i want to be sure that i give them attention then of course for us it gets better and better <laughs> yeah beautiful thank you can we give them a round of applause pastor i don't know if we have time for one or two questions yeah. let's have one or two questions <laughs> um i'll have 
the panel is pick. Well, okay, um, uh, Ashley, can you pick? Can you pick someone? Can you pick an audience member to ask a question? Pick someone, pick someone. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my question is, uh, nobody fell from the sky. Mm -hmm. We were born. And many of us will have siblings, brothers, sisters, and all. Yes. I want to know how you re relate to your brother-in-law, sister-in-laws, and your parents-in-laws. For me, I, I have a lot of uh, siblings. I'm the only child for my mom and my dad. So my dad you know, remarried, my mom remarried, so all my siblings are our siblings. And go so good, I'm involved with both sides. We relate together growing up, you know. So now getting married, my wife, so at first it was kind, kind of an issue, right? Or you want to please your brother-in-laws, you know, sister-in-laws. But I, I laid the rule that if I do something for them, that is it. Not knowing that they will go to her stylishly, hey, how are you doing now, wife? You know, from there she wants to, okay, I will send you something. But I let her understand that, please, don't do that. At first, you're like, ah, you know, you don't want them to like me. You know, I was like, no, don't do that because... If you keep doing it, I'm doing it for them. At some point, if you don't do it, you yourself will regret it because you will not say, oh, what's wrong with your wife? And I, initially she was doing it, nobody tells me. But now she's not doing it for you guys, you're not complaining. So I warned her, please don't do it. Anything you want to do, let me know. So that way we're able to you know, agree on that, relating with them. And if I do something, now they're not appreciating me, they're not thanking me. They will thank your wife for, because now they know that if the wife did not give me approval, I would not be able to do it. So now every time, school fees, feeding, because my dad is no more. I'm now the, you know, the person representing for, uh, uh, responsible for most of the things that have been now. So if I do something, oh, thank your wife for us. Like, I just sent you the money, you know. <laughs> Maybe two weeks later, now, thank you for the other day. I'm like, really? So now, she takes all the glory now. <laughs> Because they felt, oh, she's a good, she's a good wife, she's our daughter, you know, our sister. So now, you know, setting that foundation initially helps us. Now she's in, she's one enjoying the most. Okay, so we can take one more. We can take let's two two more questions. Um, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, so to the couple, um, I mean, to all the couples out there, I mean, I learned a lot. But I want to um, focus on what um, Pastor Coyote said about um, <clears throat> children, our children are all unique. I mean, you have to treat them the way they are, not because you think things should happen the way you want it to be. A case in point is um, my son. Dealing with teenagers, we all know when they get to a certain age, they don't even want to talk to you anymore. If they don't want to talk to you, like, I work longer hours. But one thing I've never lost is coming home from work, first thing, then say to the, do you guys have any homework? Do you need help? If they say no, say, okay, that's fine. But remember, your grades are going to come through me because they have this thing set up in school, synergy. I see their grades before they even know. So, <clears throat> This is my question to the panel. Um, I'm going to put you on blast. Please forgive me. Um, there was a time, as he was growing up, I always take them to do their hair. I always, I'm always, because you see my hair cut, I don't want them here to be like this. But um, this one day, I went to, um, I took him reluctantly, and he told the guy, I mean, the barber, to cut his hair a certain way. And I'm not going to pay $20 by just chipping off a little bit. Of I was like, nah. So you have to go through it. Just go through, run through it, and make it like mine. Okay, that, was, that caused a serious problem for me. Because the next day, he could not go to school. 
yeah, <laughs> fearing a backlash from his school, from his classmates. Mm. And okay, I said, okay, you want to challenge me? I'll go to the principal and talk to him. I went in there. They made a special room for him where he could sit and do his work. And I was like, is this a school system that I'm actually uh, experiencing? Because of a haircut, you don't want to go to class? So that's not going to happen. So thinking that the principal is going to be on my side, we sat down, started conversation. Oh, Mr. Sisi, that's his body. I mean, you, you, can, you cannot do that. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, you're telling me something that I did right for my child is going to cost him not to go to class because of a haircut? So I came back, relaxed. I was like, okay. So I went back to him. I said, look, from this day, moving forward, I'll give you money to go cut your own hair because you want to create that type of peace in the house, in the household, because he won't do his homework. I mean, he went, I mean, until, like, I think it was like after a week when he started going to class again, just for a single haircut. And all I'm doing is to make him look presentable. But again, so the question is, if as parents, if you face this type of situation and you have a school board working against you, so what should you do? Did I make the right decision by just leaving it alone and let it ride? I want, I want peace in my house. So it is what it is, and this is the end result. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, Thank you so much, uh, my brother. Um, <clears throat> it's the same experience that I have with my kids, as I said earlier. They are one, they are not born again. They are not, so there are times I see some parents, it's like they are forcing their children, come and do water baptism, come and do this, come and do this. There was a time I was even forcing them, go to the choir, sing in the choir, play all this. But all those things can still not get them born again. You are not born again, you are not born again. If I share a little about myself, how I became born again, I was exactly like them. I was cutting the same hairdo, I was wearing the same pants, I was, even my kids, before one of them can have a girlfriend, it was when he got to university. And when I even, when I went to the school, and I saw the girl coming to come and kiss my child, I was looking at, so I was just looking, I said, oh God, thank God this America. And something told me, I had, I was, I had, the, when I was in secondary, now I don't want a university student to, have, oh, he's not born again. That's the one thing. They are not born again. So. When I was fighting this here thing, I wanted them to be like me. You want somebody a, a 20 year, 18 years to, to, to look like a 50 years old like that. I was in my 50s, I'm in my 50s. And I want them to be like me, to dress like me. It is not possible. And I tried everything. So if you want to go that route, my brother, they may obey you, but inside them, they are not happy. We may make you happy, but they are not happy. The thing is, pray for your children that they don't commit violent crime. They don't commit crime. I work in the prison that they don't commit crime. But all these other things, it takes Christ to take it away from them. You see, you go to platform of some pastor. Pastors called have this here do. One of these churches, you see people playing music and everything, have this here do. So how Am I going to shame somebody who is not born again? It's not possible. And that's why I gave that uh, adage. Adults, come out and sway if you have never been a child. Um, to add to what he said, there was a time when um, my kids, he normally bab their hair. So if we bab it, then the kids came one day they said they are having issue at school because uh, their mates will keep on uh, you know, knocking their head or doing something like that. So they were not happy. And they said, no, no, no daddy, we're not bad. I said, okay, what is going on? They said, he did not shape the hair. I said, oh. So I told him, please, just for the kids to be comfortable. You know how they can bully kids? Take them to the baba. And then the issue of death started all my three kids i said ah, 
You need to shave this thing. I'm your mother. I'm commanding you. Shave it. Da, 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 da. Then they look at me and say, Mommy, you love daddy the way he is? I say, yes. They say, yeah, that's your husband, baby face. They want the bed. So when they say, <laughs> when they say that, I was dumbfounded. I just look at them and say, huh? You are calling your daddy? He said, yeah, but his face is baby face. We don't need that. We want our bed. So just like I said, it's, you can't force. There are some certain things you can't force on them. They are comfortable with it. And when they go, like when he was talking about the hair, I told him then, don't worry. They will take it off. Even they don't have to be born again before they do this thing. Just leave them. They will outgrow it. And that was it. They outgrown in it. So we just need to pray for them, understand them, don't constrict them as far as it's not sin. Love them, guide them, pray for them, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're gonna we'll take one more question from Bertop and then that'll be it. But I think you wanted to let me just contribute to our brother's uh, question about the school and your children. Um, the system here is quite different from what we know there. But we cannot yield to what they believe and what they do. I'll, get, I'll give this uh, scenario. My second son came back, that was two years ago. He told me that in the school, that they were saying, hey, man, should marry a man. So I said, what did you do? He said they, they were singing it as a song and came to him. He was just on, on his own. He didn't answer them, did, didn't say anything. So a girl came. And said, so he was like, pushed him away. Go away. Did I talk to you? Because the teachers and everyone, he said he stood alone and said it's not good. So because everyone was like supporting them. Later, we got a call that your, your son fought in the school. He said, what really happened? All that time, they, they will bully them, we will, we will leave that one. But this one, I told my husband, we are going to tell them that they should leave him alone. If they don't want him in that school, he will leave. But for this, I will get to the end of it. Okay, we asked, what happened? They wanted to say, eh, okay, he fought. What made him push her so when they got that he has already told us what happened so they didn't they were like they were suspending because of I said no did he say anything to her why did she come to him so when they got to know that we are like, okay okay just tell him not to fight but he, he didn't fight please next time if you have your own theory or whatever you believe Keep it to yourself. Just leave him the way he is. So I'm saying this to say, when you get to school, still take your stand. This is what you want. It now depends on your child to, you know, obey you and to listen to you. But let the school know your stand so that next time, you know, they will know how to treat your child. So we have to stand our ground to let them know our belief. Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to appreciate all the mothers and fathers, especially the first generations of Americans, because I know it's not been easy raising up children in this land because you are not used to their culture. But my question is, will be that, um, how have you been able to balance American culture and Nigerian culture that you are well groomed in, especially when it doesn't have to do with sin? So have you been able to balance American culture and Indian culture. Praise the Lord. Yeah, um, American culture, Nigerian culture, even other countries, every country, every people have their own culture. But um, the thing is, everything should come on that subject of the under the word of God. That is number one. Um, there are things that are better here. We have to look at it and understand, not just condemn everything. Yeah, there are things that, of course, from my own uh, background are better. You have to look at it and make sure. So even as we correct the children, we want to 
get a better understanding of everything so that we know we are leading them right. So, but since that Bible say no, no means no, no. We also have to understand it. I will make it known to the children. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, um, just to ship in one thing: American culture, Nigerian culture, and we have Christian culture. American culture and the culture in Lagos. There's, I don't see any difference. But when you are a Christian, it's a different culture entirely. So it's how you balance your Christian culture with the worldly culture. So you just have to start from the beginning telling your children. If you are living in Nigeria, Lagos in particular, it's just the same thing. You don't want your children to be like the children of the world. There was a time somebody came to my, to my, to my store and he said, oh, this person, uh, is our daughter just got married? He said, "Do you know that 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 our daughter, she 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 was a virgin?" I said, "What?" Ah, I said that in this, uh, you know. I said, "I said which school did he say he attended the uh, Unilag?" I said, "Bro, don't put your money on that." <laughs> yeah, because there is no is no, no difference, except a man be born again. There is no difference between the, the culture here and the culture. In Nigeria, but we just have to teach our children the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. Thank you. So, so, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse <me>. Sure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This balancing, and as uh, Pastor said, to know our stand, I went to my child's school twice. The first one I went, I met the depression. When they were doing Halloween, I said, Halloween, it is no, no. No, I, I first asked her, is this mandatory every student must participate? Um, uh, I said, uh, uh, yes or no? Um, he said, well, if you want, my children, number one, she will, he will not come to school on that day. And if he comes, I will not see anything. If it is anything, we'll go to court. Okay, what's your daughter's name? So he called the teacher. Please, this one will not participate. So, and the second one, when they were giving them boxes to go on the street and be begging for money, I said, we are not beggars. Oh, we are just raising money. I said, no, we are not. If you need to contribute money, I will contribute. But for my children to be on the street, and they said, no. What's uh, your uh, son's uh, grade? I told him 50, go and come in the teacher. Hey, don't give him a uh, paper to go on the street. So I told them, this is my stand, the child of God, and I'm raising my children as Christian. So to, <clears throat> to balance it, when it contradicts the word of God or your principle or policy, I know we are facing a lot of things, especially the children. Christian value, church value, uh, family value, societal value, and government value. Here, I, I always I sit my children. For them to pick, we have to use our map, Atlas, of the kingdom of God, the Bible. God helps you, sir. Thank you so much. And there's so, there's so many questions. There's so people raising hands. I don't know what to do. Um, but clearly there's... Okay, let's have sorry, a Sorry, before you pick uh, another person, can I just make a quick comment about this uh, issue of balancing? Because I know the question is coming from a young adult. So uh, for me, I think what helps me to... That in the realm of balancing is understanding the environment. Because the environment shapes our behaviors. You know, uh, and our behaviors outside, at home, differs. So, as our parents coming from Africa, we need to take time to understand what is happening in our environment. And one thing I think we need to also do is that uh, that helps me. I know where I came from. I know my family history. I know what 
name of gods that are there. So, and relating those things to what is happening in my environment in America has helped me to know, okay, this is no good area. Halloween, or whatever festival they are you know, doing, that has helped me, even in my school, you know, that helps me to avoid some things. Even in my class, there was a day, somebody was talking, talking about Ogun, because I went to a liberal school, UDC. Many cultures, everybody came from other places. They talk about what they believe in, and someone was talking about Ogun. I was just smiling, laughing, because it's kind of like um, acculturation, you know, to want to blend to something that you don't really get to understanding of it, but you're talking about it just to make sure, oh, I know about this. I'm like, no, that's not right. This Ogun is this, this, this. I'm like, wow. But now I'm a Christian. I'm no longer, I no longer worship that because I'm a Christian. I'm like, wow, okay. They were able to ask, okay, what makes you to make that transition? And they would come, boils down to Christianity is a white man religion. Jesus said, well, no, 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 no. If Jesus is black, would you say the same thing or would you not? Like, oh, mm. But, you know, they want to go to history, but having an understanding of where you are coming from and be able to present it to them, this is the reason why. Give them a reason, you know, and starting a family now, I believe I will follow that trend as well. This is where I came out from, and this is what I believe now. And give reason to the children why you want them to do something in a particular way, in a Christian way, and why you don't want them to follow the way of the world. So you're saying, just in response to the question about the different cultures, that you, that as parents you have to understand where you're coming from, what your culture is, understand what the culture is that you're now living in, and figure out how to help your, okay, figure out how to help your children navigate, navigate the, between yes, the two. Yes. Okay. And also, I think, I think, most parents, they, they don't go deep towards. African culture is. Because the, 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 the understanding of the kids we are raising in America is that Africa is poor. You know, uh, people are, people are you know, impoverished. You know, even my family, I know we went like miles to, 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 to fetch waters, you know, to fetch, you know, some things for, for, for livelihood, you know, to survive. But why is that? What, what do you gain from that? How does that help you to build your personalities, you know, coming to America. So I think once we have that deeper conversation with our children, it will help them to understand that, no, we are not of this world. Because if my dad can come out from that thing, easily I can. Because when I, I did psychology, and as a master in behavior analysis, I understand that sometimes having a conversation about things alleviate all the issue of bullying because we, we do not instill that sense of confidence in our kids. You know, if they understand things to the level of, they can express it themselves, hone it themselves, they'll be able to defend themselves out there. Because so, we cannot deny that what is happening in our social world today influences most of the I mean, behaviors that you're seeing out there today. So we need to go back to the border and have time to talk with our kids. Where are we coming from? where we came from, or, I mean, just let them understand it and be able to blend it in such a way that they understand, that, okay, being a Christian is just an ultimate goal that will help you to focus on what is most important out there and to achieve the best. Thank you. I know there's a mummy that has been wanting to ask questions. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, before I ask my question, it's something I want to talk, just as everybody have said, we are from Africa, and this, but to my own little understanding that I have, like in every environment, there are different things going on. In this part of the world, this is their setup. We that came from Africa, we have our own setup over there. And the way as time goes on, we going like they say, going to the future, is different thing. Things are changing every day. But as for me, um, I have my children in Africa. All of my children have them in Africa. Okay, they were there. I taught them because like deeper life in Africa. Our children, we know that when they go to church, they go to church, they will be small. They can give memory verse and so many things. But as I came over here, my first son, like my first son, my first son, I was going to UMC, United Methodist Church. 
My son come from deeper life one day. I used to send them there. I don't go there. So he, he, he preached to me that time he was about 12, about heaven. I went into my room. I wept. I said to say my son is going to make heaven. I'm not going there. That's what brought me to deeper life. I started going there. But I'm telling you, by the grace of God, as we say to pray, prayer should be our key. Day and night, morning and morning. Now I'm crying sometimes. That same son that makes me to go deeper life is telling me that Christianity is calm. Saying Christianity is calm. My dear mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, our children as we are here, let us pray for our children. The devil is fierce. Over this part of the world, where the Bible said the devil come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, this is the place. Let not ignore things. We have to stand firm. If Christ told us what to do, we have to stand for our children. Or else, it's not going the way we think it will go. But I'm asking God, that God, that same child, always, I have eight kids. I, I say, God, you gave them to me. I dedicate them back to you. Not what I want, but what you want. Take care of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I think I think we can end on that note. I have I have chills. So what what I'm ga gaining from everything that we've heard, um, just to summarize for the for the audience benefit, is that um, when you come from a different culture, as 